He is good. Amen. Just tell him how good he is this morning. We do, Father God. We thank you that you are good. Oh, you're good to us, Father God. You're a good Father and a good Savior. Oh, thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Just with your own words, just worship him right now. Father, we do. We worship your name. For you are worthy and mighty and holy in this place, Father God. We are so grateful and thankful, Father God, for all that you are and all that you're doing in our lives today, Father. You are truly good. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. You know, I was thinking about that song as we were singing about it. How about the part I like about he's the wind in my sails, you know. He is really, truly the one that will help us get through this life. Amen? You know, we need Jesus. Amen? I know I need him every day. And uh, not ashamed to tell people that we need the Lord. We need him every day. Amen? He is the wind in our sails. He's the one that helps us do all that he's called us to do. Amen? Amen. Go ahead and greet one another this morning, and I'm going to take up an offering. All right. As you guys are finding your way back to your seats this morning, um, if you need an offering envelope, go ahead and raise your hand up high. The ushers are in the aisles. Ushers are out. I hope there's uh, ushers in the aisles. There they are. All right. Ushers are in the aisles. If you need an offering envelope, go ahead and raise your hand up good and high. They will see you. There you go. They'll slide one in there. Make sure that you have an opportunity to give. Amen? All right, can you put our scripture up on the, uh, on the screen here this morning? I'm using the same one, Galatians chapter 6. All right. So you guys know I've been talking about what? The last few offerings. Developing something. What is it that we're developing? A green thumb. Good job. Develop a green thumb. You know, not everyone has a green thumb, but you can develop one. You can learn, and you can get a green thumb. Amen? And you need to do that in your giving. And uh, maybe you're not prospering in your giving. Well, check the color of your thumb. Amen? Get a Sharpie that's green and paint it green if you have to. But develop a green thumb. Amen? Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. You know, giving is spiritual. Amen? It's something that's spiritual. The Bible says if you sow to the flesh, then that you will reap corruption. That means the things of this earth will corrupt. You know, if you bought a brand spanking new house today, and it was all nice and beautiful, but you never maintained it, what would it look like? 10 years, 20 years, or 50 years from now. It'd be a mess. If you bought a brand new car today, you went out this afternoon and bought a brand new beautiful car, but you never maintained it. What would it look like in 10 years, and 20 years, if it even makes it that far, right? Well, what about your giving? Amen? You need to maintain your giving. Amen? And uh, it says, goes on to say this, but let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season... This is the promise of God. In due season, we will reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. So this is an opportunity for you to sow into the kingdom of God and reap a harvest, reap a benefit. You know, this reminds me of a story. I was listening to the radio one day, and there was this guy. He was going to visit a friend of his, and they were from California. And so he went with him to visit his friend in California, and he found out that his friend's dad was a farmer and that he had a beautiful peach orchard. 
And he goes, really, I've never been to a peach orchard. He goes, well, tomorrow, let's go visit my dad and check out the orchard. And it just happened to be in the fall when the, pre when the peaches were just beautiful and ripe. Remember last year, honey, we were talking about that. We were, this is what reminded me of the story. We went, Christy wants to do the Fruit Loop. Have you guys ever done the Fruit Loop, the one that's out in Hood River? Yeah, you got to be pretty fruity and pretty loopy to do it. But anyway, the Fruit Loop, anyway. Um, so anyway, we go there, and there's, last year we went and we got these peaches. And I'll tell you what, man, whoa, they were good. You know, you put them on the counter, and when they're just right, oh, man, I tell you. I like to put mine in the fridge, get them nice and cold. Oh, man, they are good. But this farmer, he had an orchard like that. And this, they went out to see it, and the guy marveled at how beautiful his peaches were. They were beautiful. They were big. And the farmer, you know, like a good farmer, he pulls a knife out of his pocket, pulled one down, cut it in half, and the guy goes, you know, I bit into that peach, and I thought, you know, that is the best piece of fruit I've ever had in my life. And then he looked at his friend, and he goes, how does he do it? And he goes, you only get peaches like this when the farmer spends time in the field. You know, and I thought about our giving. You only get a bountiful blessing. You only reap a bountiful harvest when you spend time in the field. And the field, in this case, is giving. Giving to the field. Giving to God's field. You know, like our church, this is actually a field. We are making a difference right here in Portland. And we have other fields besides this one. We have one that's in India. We have one that's in Germany. We have them all around the world of other people that we support. So when you give, just remember, you are planting in a good soil, a good field. Amen? And you're developing a green thumb. Amen? And you should be just like that farmer. You spend time in the field, you'll have a beautiful harvest. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you for this morning. And as we give today, we thank you that we are blessed of God. We're blessed in our giving. We're blessed as a church, Father God. We thank you, Father, that we are making a difference here in Portland, Oregon, and around the world. We pray for our missionaries today, Father God, and those that are out teaching the word of God that we are supporting. We pray that you bless them, Father God, with a bounty so that they can make a difference in the world where they're at, Father God, whether it's India, Ukraine, Germany, wherever they are today, Father God. Use them for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, ushers, take up the offering. Good morning. It's quiet in this house tonight, so talk, talk, to talk, talk. All right. Have you guys ever been stressed out a little bit? I just want to share a little moment. We had an incident in our home this week, and the incident's not important because it's always an incident that can upset you, right? So really, the incident is not significant. But I was upset, and I got a little stressed out. I even cried a little bit. And um, then the scripture came to me, he whose mind, he will keep you at perfect peace, whose mind, he, whose mind is stayed on thee. And I thought, well, stink, that must mean my mind is not stayed on him. And so I just quick, just that quick, all I, that I said was, okay, I, I, keep, I fix my mind on you. And guess what? That stress and that, that, all that stuff just went away. The incidents remain the same. <laughs> but, but, but if you keep your mind on him, you'll have peace. Amen? Help me. I'm sure somebody else will hold on to that, right? I want to remind you guys that this afternoon there's a potluck, if you didn't see that there today. So I um, hope you brought food. I can't ask you to bring food because you're already here, right? All right. But you could maybe make a quick call or... Can you email pizza to ha come? I don't know. I can't, you know. Not that you text during church because that's bad, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. Some people are like, yes, it is. Other people are laughing because they know, you know, some of us do it. All right. We're probably just sending out how awesome the message is or worship's great. Woohoo, right? Look at us, worship. Okay. All right. So there's a potluck, and, we're, and the goal is to reach out to the community. So when you see people you don't know, who can tell me what you're supposed to do? Talk to them. Yeah, introduce yourself. Be friendly, okay? So, you know, just let them know how awesome you are because you guys are wonderful, all right? What was that say here? No, don't preach. What are you saying? 
Yeah, don't preach to them. Don't preach. Come in here. Pastor Steve will preach to them on Sunday when they decide to come in. We're going to go love on them, okay? Uh, prayer Wednesday night, this at 7 o'clock. You are invited to join us, all right? do want to encourage you guys, too. Uh, this morning in the Cardian, um, he goes, let's pray for those kids in Thailand. Hey, there's stuff going on all around the world that our prayers get to make a difference. Um, some people don't want to watch the news because they always say it's negative. But you might not know what's going on if you don't know, if you don't watch. So I encourage you, when you see stuff that just, you know, when you see the violence and the hurt and stuff going on in the world, that's your cue to pray. That's your cue to pray. So uh, come on Wednesday night. We're going to pray as a group. But if you don't come on Wednesday, do take your key or your cue to pray. Uh, the 20th of this month, if you're married, you're invited to our house. We're going to have a barbecue out at our house, and we will have uh, our married group with a wonderful, fantastic topic. And so we'll give you some more information. But we're going to pull out the, the cow that's in the fridge, right, or the, in the freezer. So we will bring, we'll, we'll provide the meat, all right, and we'll barbecue that. You guys bring some fantastic side dish. Say, please say fantastic. Because I have to admit, on the 4th of July, it was really pretty bad. All the, all the side dishes, okay? We, 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 were, we were side dish poor. It's okay that I say that, isn't it? It's okay that I tell you the truth. All right. So, so bring really good food, all right? It doesn't make you feel bad, does it? Yeah. Step up. Yeah, bring something good to eat. All right, so. <laughs> all right, anyway, let's go on. Volunteer meeting. On the 22nd of this month, we're going to have a volunteer meeting. This meeting is uh, because, do you know the church is supposed to be the church? Your pastor's not supposed to do all the work. It's the church that's supposed to do the work. So we're all going to come together on the 22nd. The meeting's not going to be long, but it's going to get us all on one page. And it doesn't mean you have to do everything, but everybody should be doing something. And so when you come to the meeting, we will just have a great discussion. Uh, Pastor Steve will let us know some of the stuff that's going on. More things will come out of this meeting, uh, but, but you're the church. Say, I'm the church. I'm the church. Wait, I didn't see some people say it. Okay, so, okay, say it again. Say it. I'm the church. I'm the church. So just come to that meeting on the 22nd, and let's all get on the same page. And then if you have an idea or an a, th a thought, I'm sure that is a great opportunity for you guys to be able to voice that there, okay? Also, I'll let you know the young adults we're doing a character study, and I don't have everybody's phone number, so I do need some of your phone numbers if you want to get in on that, all right? Thanks. That meeting is right after church. Anything else I didn't say? Okay, all right. Hallelujah. So I had just a... A little instruction this morning I wanted to do I want us all to just stand up as the body of Christ as the church and we're gonna do a little bit more maintenance we're just gonna pray in tongues as a church for a minute pride says that we always know what to pray but then God gave us the Holy Spirit and he gave us a heavenly language that knows the perfect prayer so we're gonna pray in tongues we're gonna build ourselves up by his most holy faith this morning we're going to yield to God. We're going to surrender to Him. We're going to consecrate those things that don't belong in our mind. Raba baba si ke shoroso, riba sa tai la shoto, reba si tiri abashe, roba si te, ora bashi te, ora basendai, la mashondo, karaba si te, robo soto, raba she we go into worship, God, we want to hear what you have to say. We want to hear the God of the universe speak to us. We are your sheep, and we hear your voice. Speak to us today, God. That you 
You bring. 
not about condemnation. He loves you enough to point out areas he wants to deliver you from to the smallest details of your life. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you right now as we prepare to take communion that as we examine ourselves before communion that we just take to heart this word, Lord, that we would truly let you examine us and that we would let go of those things that hinder our relationship with you. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Amen. So the worship team stayed there. You know, I just was realizing that, you know, the worship team, you know, it, sounds, it just sounds so wonderful, you know. But it doesn't sound good without a sound man. You've got to have a sound man. Cody, thank you. giving honor to whom honor is due. Amen. So that's part of why we wanted, we have, um, going to have a, a, uh, a volunteers meeting. And, and when Christy brought that up, this is one of my, absolutely, this is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, in the New Testament. And it is, as each one, this is 1 Peter 4, 10, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. Everybody has received a gift. Amen. You are gifted. You say, well, Pastor Steve, uh, what is it? You need to find out. Yeah. You know, I like what Tommy Barnett said, the great preacher Tommy Barnett. I had the privilege of sitting in a, in a, in a service uh, that he did at the Dream Center. You guys were there. Were you guys there? At the Dream Center there with yeah, And, and uh, that trip, I can't remember if you were there. But anyway, he had a famous line that he had in his church. And, and uh, he said, find a need and fill it. Yes, I remember that. Find a need and fill it. And people often, they just think, well, I don't know what. Well, you know what? We have needs. You can fill it. Yeah. And then you'll go, wow, this really feels great. I like serving here. Then there you found it. But you'll never find it sitting. Right. It'll never happen sitting. So then he goes on to say, so as, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God, you are given that gift by the grace of God. So as a good steward of that gift, instead of burying that gift and doing nothing with it, do something with it and give it to others. See, people think, well, I don't have to go to church, you know. Uh, church, isn't, you know church isn't about uh, a building. No, but you know what? That's not what the Bible teaches. The, 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 building, the church is about the, the family of God coming together to bless one another with their giftings. That's what it's about. People miss that. They, they think, oh, it's just about, you know, you got, and, and, and that, uh, well, you know, it's an obligation. No, it's about the gift that you have and give that away. 
And so he goes on to say this. He says, if anyone, lets, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. That would be me. That would be Dion. That would be Bruce. That would be uh, Rick. You know, people that can, can preach in front of a crowd. You say, well, is that me? I don't know. You'll have to find out. But then there's others. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. You can minister in, in, as a greeter. You're ministering as a greeter. And then he says that in all things, God may be glorified through, who, through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory of the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, come to the meeting. And you're saying, we'll, find, and not, we'll tell you where we, where we have needs. Amen. All right, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to be fairly uh, quick today because I really want to, you know, I, I was uh, uh, reading, uh, hearing about what communion. See, when Paul wrote this letter and he addressed that, how many know he, he addressed a lot of issues with the Corinthians? I mean, they had a lot of issues, but they're very spiritual people. They just, they love God. They had some things that needed to be corrected, but overall, they were, they were doing well. And, um, but there were some things that needed correction. And one of the things is when they came together to have communion, they were actually getting hammered. They were. They were getting drunk and they were, and, uh, they, they were drinking too much of the communion juice. And, uh, and they were partying too, too much. And Paul, uh, oh, by the way, uh, um, next week, isn't this something? The timing, unbelievable. So next week, we will, I will, deal with the issue of drinking in church. <laughs> in the body of Christ. It's a hot button topic, man. That most, in fact, I talked to a guy at, at, on 4th of July and he talked to his pastor. Uh, he doesn't go to that church anymore, but he told me his pastor at the time told him, I will never talk about that. Because most don't want to talk about it, they don't want to touch it, you know. But, you know what? In Ephesians chapter 5, which I'm going to pick up on, he addresses it. So we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about that. And that should be very interesting. So, in any case, getting to 1 Corinthians, this is what they were doing. And Paul was saying, listen, you're, 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 it's really getting out of hand, but you got to know this. He said that what they, when they came together, what it was about, it was a community of believers. And they were having basically a love fest is what it was. It was the believers coming together, sharing food and they were, it was the body of Christ. That was what it was about. That's why we have this every second Sunday is because we need to come together as a body of believers, sit down, eat a meal together, and that's what they were doing. And you know what? It was good for the church. It was a good thing. Now, they were getting it out of hand. Things were getting out of hand. But Paul did not say, stop right. having communion. Right. He said, check this out, you know, Check on this, get it, get in order, but co continue to do this. Yes. And so he went on and said in verse 23 of chapter 11, 1 Corinthians, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, isn't that wonderful? He was betrayed by, by Judas Iscariot, and that very night, he sat right there with him at the table and gave thanks. I don't know about you. Anybody here been betrayed by somebody? Well, you know what? Give thanks to God in the midst of it. Because if Jesus did it, we can do it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We can do it. Just and, that, and that's all part of communion is about examining yourself. If you've got unforgiveness, get rid of it. It's a good thing to get rid of unforgiveness. Amen? And so he took that, he was betrayed, but he gave thanks anyway. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, he gave thanks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. 
So it's in remembrance. It's a remembering thing. Amen? It's, you know what it is? It's basically a, a memorial service. You know, we have memorial services for people when they pass away. What are we doing? We're remembering them. Well, this is a memorial service for Jesus' death. But the difference is when we have a memorial service for somebody, we bury them and they don't rise again until Jesus raises them as a believer. Amen? But in this case, in the memorial service, Peter, or, or, uh, Peter, Paul went on to say this in verse 26, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. Every time we do this, we remember that he paid the price for our sins. It's a memorial. It's a remembrance every single time, the cost that he paid. And then this, till he comes. Isn't that awesome? He's coming back. He said he would. The Bible predicted he would come the first time. It gave us the time. I mean, it gave the year, basically, if you read in, uh, I mean, the exact year is up for grabs, but the Daniel's 70th week and all of that fulfilled. Oh, well, there's a hot button right there. But anyway, uh, um, but, but uh, Daniel predicted this, and then uh, Micah predicted the town he would be born in. I mean, there's all kinds of prophecies that were fulfilled uh, um, Isaiah 53 gives a, uh, the whole description of his, his death, burial, and resurrection. And, and so we're, we're remembering all that till he comes. He was, it was predicted that he would come, and then he said he would come again. And so every time we do this, we're remembering his death, but we're also remembering his resurrection. It's the whole package, and we're remembering that he's coming back for us. Either when we're alive or when we're in the grave and we, are, we, we meet, the body meets him in the air. Amen? Amen. So we're going we're gonna to go right now. We're going to go right to this. And uh, if you, the only, uh, I, I haven't said this often enough, but the only, you say, well, Pastor Steve, who can take communion? Well, it's for believers who have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And you're, re, you're re bringing into remembrance the fact that he paid the price for your sins. And you believe with your heart, you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord. Amen. So with that, why don't you come forward? Worship team, you got a song. Father, we thank you this day for thinking of your creation and, pay, and sending us the perfect sacrifice for sin. Thank you, Father. 
And Jesus, we thank you that you gave us represented in this wafer your, blood, your body. Let's take the, take the bread. And Lord, it was broken. It was broken for us. You said in your word, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of you. So Lord, we take this. We break it as a symbol of you being broken on that cross. Coming as a man, fully man, fully God, for us. Thank you, Lord. Let's partake. And Lord, you said that this cup is the new covenant in your blood. This represents your blood that was spilled at Calvary that the writer of Hebrews said without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sin there's no removal there's it's it's not without the shedding of blood for the life is in the blood and you poured out your life for us now we take this in remembrance what you did in gratefulness and thankfulness in Jesus name Let's partake. Father, we thank you. Thank you. And Lord, may we keep in remembrance all that the Savior did for us and what he's continuing to do for us because he's alive and well and interceding for us in Jesus name and everyone said amen, amen. go ahead, let's finish with yeah let's just go through it one time you Lord glory amen now you get a shout out of you thank you Lord yeah. father we just ask that you bless this food to nourish on our bodies we thank you Lord for our time of fellowship conversation with one another building one another up we thank you father bless our time bless the hands that have prepared it in Jesus name and everyone said amen, amen. let's eat <laughs>